That's really good. So, okay, I'm going to talk about a bunch of things which really are linked to some work that we started doing about three, three and a half years ago. We'd been looking at student email, and student email was becoming a, a kind of commodity item. We thought, well, maybe we could uh, run student email as a cloud service. Maybe we could sign up with someone like Google or Microsoft. And if you if you look at my blog and you look at the companion slides, you'll see a few pointers to some work that we've done really over the last, as I say, kind of three, three and a half years. And we were one of the early UK universities to switch to Google. And so we introduced it for our students. And I think it's it's safe to say we've we've never looked back really from the point of view of um student email calendaring which they never had before and then it turns out that they're actually really keen on um, things like Google Docs so the interesting question then is really where does it go next and that's really what I want to talk about here but something I'd, I'd like to get a feel for is what proportion of you guys are learning technologists because I kind of um, built this up with the expectation that you're mostly learning technologists. So thank you. Some people have started ticking boxes already. Uh -huh. But I'm seeing quite a few people who aren't learning technologists. So um, if, you're not, if you're not working in e-learning, I'd be interested if you could um, pop a little note in the chat box so that I know what it is that you are doing. And, and for the rest of you, thanks very much. I think that's enough ticks now. And so do do feel free to drop a little note in the chat box, and I'll I'll try and customise this as we go along. So I was talking about things that we've we've done. One thing that we did that was very interesting was organising a couple of um, Google Apps user group meetings. Which, um, looking at the list of participants, I know that some of you have attended one or both of those. And the the kind of content we've had, it's not just been about techies. Um, talking techie to techie, it's also been about the, the pedagogy and and how do you actually build on these tools that you get from from the likes of Google to integrate them with your VLE or maybe even replace your VLE. But I'm I'm getting ahead of myself there. Thanks for the comments there. I'm just seeing them coming through there. I'm I'm seeing a, an actual academic. This is good. Hello, actual academic. It's 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 good to have you here. Um, last um, last summer we did a little bit of a, a project with um, Google and Alt to um, try and recognize some some examples of excellence in terms of what people could do with with the Google tools so you may have seen this if you if you came to Alt you you are probably um, wowed by the stuff that people have produced but I've got a couple of examples here this is all about linguistics and there's a link to this site and a couple of other things in the uh, Google Doc with some shared URLs, which I think a few people have posted a link to. I'll, I'll send a link to it as well in the chat box at the end of my bit. Um, so the, all about linguistics was great. Map my program was really great. And there's a bunch of other stuff that people came forward with, which, which really showed us what you could do with these tools if you put your mind to it. So going back to our, our starting premise, <clears throat> excuse me, we started off with this in the sense of um, having an immediate problem. We, we had to solve our student email problem. We've seen as time passed that these tools have all kinds of other applications and benefits. And the interesting question for me really is now how do we how do we pick up on them and exploit them collectively? So you've already heard from uh, Mark Johnson number one about the um, potential of using uh, Moodle with Google Docs repositories and all the rest of it. So you know that that stuff is in there now. If you've upgraded to Moodle two. Um, you have a whole bunch of integration that just comes as part of the package, and, and that's nice. Um, but let's say you know Moodle isn't the be-all and end-all of things. What tools do you actually get if you sign up for Google Apps? And what I'm really heading for here is, as learning technologists, as academics, as librarians, and so on, you, you may not actually be aware of the full range of stuff that's potentially available to you. And the reason is that um, some places have taken a conscious decision to say, well, we'll, we'll release this, we'll see how it goes. 
if it works out okay, we'll release some more stuff. So, for example, Cambridge released Google Calendar, and then they said, right, well, we'll let the dust settle for a bit, and then we'll we'll let something else out. So it's not necessarily the case that even all of the the core Google tools, which I've I put on this slide, will be enabled at your institution. And that's not to say that you can't try them out, because these tools are typically available with a, a personal account as well. So if you have a Gmail account, you can try pretty much anything. And well, what changed recently? Simple thing. Google said, OK, this is all very well. They had about half a dozen core tools. But recently, they made pretty much the entire range of Google tools available if you want them with your institutional account. So we went from a position where if you were using Google Apps institutionally, you would have things like Gmail and Docs and Calendar, and it was all good. But now, pretty much anything you can think of um, is, is fair, fair game. So you'll see things like Blogger and Picasso, Google Reader, Google Maps. You can use all these things with your institutional Google Apps account, providing they've been enabled. So that was the, the point I made earlier on. Someone has to make a conscious decision, we're going to turn this on. And you may need to do a bit of lobbying. If there's a particular feature that you want to use uh, pedagogically, you may need to actually get that turned on for your institution. And the thing that you should know about that is that the consumer applications I'm talking about, the likes of Blogger and Picasso, are not covered by the uh, contract that you may have negotiated with Google for your use of the core Google Apps tools. So the core tools we spent, I think I said in the chat window, maybe about three months negotiating around this. Um, you, you don't have the equivalent agreement covering your use of the consumer apps. So that's an important thing that you need to be aware of. Um, what good stuff is there out there? And I wanted to single out one thing in particular, which is uh, Google Plus Hangouts. So if you've looked at Google Plus and you thought, yeah, you know, what's, what's all this about? Hangouts is probably the killer feature, and um, I will say say no more than go and go and have a look at it and have a play if you haven't already. But I'm just curious um, if we could have another um, box ticking exercise. Who's used Google Hangouts already? Thank you. I'm seeing the the numbers going up pretty rapidly here, but also it's about half and half. So. My, my assumption was that not everybody would have been exposed to this stuff, and, and I think that bears me out. So if you haven't had a try with it yet, there's a, a link in the accompanying document, which is principally about developers, but it will also show you some videos and things and give you an idea about getting started. I noticed some comments in the chat window. Who, who makes decisions about approving and releasing things? I think you, you've probably hit on, on a key point there, Mark. The answer is it depends, and, it, and I think it depends per institution. So there isn't a there isn't a, a necessarily an obvious group, let's say, that would make that sort of decision. And these aren't the sorts of issues that people are traditionally used to dealing with or necessarily comfortable with. But let's let's move on. So the point about the Google Hangouts slide was actually this is a, a slide for developers. And nearly all of the Google products have hooks that let you add your own stuff onto them. So let's say, OK, in broad brush terms, maybe I'm, I'm not a programmer. I don't want to add stuff on. But actually, um, Google have created a thing called the Apps Marketplace. And that lets you extend Google Apps. And there's a whole bunch of educational tools including what you could you could view as the beginnings of learning management systems stroke VLEs. So I've highlighted a couple here. There's Course Director and Open Class. And you might say, are these going to take over from my Blackboard or my Moodle tomorrow? I think the answer is is no, realistically. There's a whole bunch of things that need doing before they're, they're even suitable candidates. But it does give you an idea about where things might be going. The, the fact that there are all these tools and they're very tightly integrated. I think if you're reviewing your VLE in two or three years' time, you'll probably be looking at one or more of these. And it may be worth you getting some experience with them before then. Something else that's been um, quite a boon is that 
with Google you can have personal and institutional accounts and you can switch between them so you don't have you don't have that business of oh right okay now I have to log out or I have a completely different set of credentials to remember etc etc you can actually um, hook up multiple Google accounts and switch between them pretty much at will certainly in all of the key services there's the odd one that's um, a little bit behind and that you will actually have to log into separately or that you won't be able to switch accounts into but the stuff that you're most likely to use is, has now been subsumed inside that framework and as, as Sarah says managing multiple accounts can be a pain so you may find that someone shares a document with you which you can't read because your your principal identity at that point in time is let's say your personal Google account rather than your institutional one and there's a role there for anybody involved in let's call it e-learning support to to try and help people uh, through the maze there and somebody said where are things going then and will Google pay their taxes I'm afraid I'm not going to talk about taxes today so maybe do that one another day um, I talked about developers and for me there's a particularly interesting thing which I, I've got a pointer here to a, a, a guest lecture series that I'm doing for our computer science department right now and the principle of that is to introduce people to the, the core technologies around cloud computing that they might subsequently want to exploit in their, in their working career and what's become very clear is that there's a whole bunch of stuff which uh, is being offered across the board now so for instance it used to be the case that if you wanted to get a, a virtual server running in quote unquote in the cloud Amazon were pretty much the only place to go now you can pay as you go with a virtual server from umpteen different places and umpteen different people have built platforms that you can build your applications on top of and you then have this whole situation that the tools that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis, these um, interactive Web2 type tools, things like Blogger, uh, things like Google Docs, have APIs that you can hook up into. And that's what I'm going to show you next. Someone said, is this intro to cloud computing available to all? It, it is. There's the, you can see those slides are a SlideShare link. It's not a MOOC, though. Not yet, anyway. Let me know if you think it should be. Um, okay, so here's here's a practical example, Google Docs. We have a, a student portal that we built ourselves, and it's it's using a sort of widget approach, although it's it's not a W3C widget approach. And we look at this and we say, well, okay, how do we how do we go from the information that's in Google to show people stuff on their screen? So I appreciate that not all of you would, would dream of delving into this stuff at this level of detail, but I hope over the next two or three slides you'll get an idea about what's really involved. So let's say I've got a bunch of documents in Google Docs and I'd like to pull them out and display them to somebody. And the reality is I have to send Google something that looks a bit like this slide. So I have to say get a URL and there's a bunch of parameters that says basically is this person um, okay should I let them in or not authentication details and that's what I send them it's actually that's the entirety of what I send them and that's called a restful API that approach has been very popular and what do I actually do to code that as a programmer not very much more than what I've shown on the screen here I've deleted a couple of bits just to just to fit it on but fundamentally uh, if I'm a PHP programmer there's a library I can call out to and most of that stuff is generic the bits I highlighted in green are the the things that are particular to your institution or also your own personal use of this because you don't have to be an enterprise customer to get access to these APIs I was talking about so if you want to build your own stuff if you want to hook up to um, the Google infrastructure pretty much everything you need is actually available to you as an end user and you could say well some of these things are chargeable and I would be the first to admit that there's a bit of a, a furore about Google Maps API um, but the, the bottom line is if you want to get into this if you're learning about coding then there's there's a route in for you 
and somebody working in an institution, there may be opportunities for projects, um, student projects and your own internal development, but take advantage of not just having access to the end users version of the services, but also going behind the scenes, lifting the veil, if you like, and, and poking around in there. And that's what these APIs do. The reality is you get some XML document back, which will look a bit like this. So I asked Google via the API, what stuff have you got? I said, hello, what stuff have you got for this particular user? Here's the code I wrote to do it. And here's what I got back. So we're talking about something in quite abstract terms, let's say ordinarily. You can talk about things like APIs, and if you're not a programmer, it's a pretty meaningless thing. You've now seen and I appreciate that some of you are familiar with coding, you've now seen how this works. And OK, parsing XML documents isn't something that you would necessarily want to do uh, on, a, on a sunny Sunday afternoon. But there are libraries that will do that kind of thing for you. So there's our, there's our user. And we've got some documents back. The documents are the bits that are highlighted in red. And you could just pick those up, construct links to them, and bingo, you end up with something a bit like our widget. So it doesn't have to be hard. And you might say I'm kind of laboring the point a little, but there is a reason for it. And the reason is this. The reason is that um, just as Moodle has been hugely successful, um, not just in the HE sector, in the education sector generally, um, cloud services like Google Apps, and I would include Office 365 here, are being pushed out all over the place. So if you think about the new environment for kids going to school learning about ICT, if the kids going to school and learning about ICT learn a bit of programming, and there's a possibility that they may arrive at your institution having done this kind of thing. They may have done it for years. And I, I think that will give us all quite a different perspective on, on how we approach this whole technology enhanced learning um, arena. So that's that's my that's my talk really for today. And I'd in, invite any comments um, on the on the shared Google Doc about the, that content particularly, or uh, via the chat window or the moderators, if there's any particular questions you wanted to raise now. Thanks very much, guys.